Five. Stacey, happy Friday. Good to see you. Happy Friday. Thank you. I know you've written a lot about uh, not just the historic nature of their guide, uh, but why there is this large uh, gap between uh, their upside and what the sector's done. Uh, what's the answer? The gap in terms of what, in terms of the stock price or the guide itself? Yeah, yeah, the, the stock price. Well, I mean, look, everybody right now is scrambling in the in the wake of that to find AI plays. It's very clear that this is something that is real. And if you're looking at the winners and losers, I mean, you, you clearly have NVIDIA, and then you have everybody else, maybe. And if you're looking for a real pure play to play, this, there aren't a whole lot of them. NVIDIA is one of the, 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 the few that are there. And um, just given the magnitude of, of the uptick in, in the estimates uh, on the back of that guide, I'm actually surprised personally that the stock's not at more. Um, we've said this, but I mean, it's, it's clear to see the stock actually is cheaper today than it was before they reported because the stock's up about 25% or whatever, but the estimates went up 50% plus. Um, and there indeed, we can talk about it, but there indeed may be room for more um, uh, going forward. But that, yeah, that's yeah. why it's performed the way it has. Yeah, we, we talked about how it arguably got cheaper the day after the yeah. guide. But are, are there are there any quibbles about whether the guidance you think is durable and whether they can deliver? Oh, sure. Yeah, look, so I think there is a question right now that this, this is a massive surge. And is it real or is it, you know, is it panic buying? Are we pulling forward from next year? Could next year be a down year because this year is so strong? It's... It, it's possible, like at some point, they will undoubtedly have a digestion cycle. They've happened in the past. They will happen in the future. Now, now that being said, data center for them this year is probably gonna grow 90% plus year over year. Um, that is not atypical for the first year of a product cycle. I know the numbers are bigger now, but that's not atypical. And one single year of, of annual growth would actually be the anomaly. Normally you get several years of growth, like as they introduce new products and so, just based on history, you know, you, you could have more. I, I think that's fine. And then I would say, even if we're pulling for it from next year, we won't know it for quite a while. I would still take the over rather than the under on numbers as we go through the rest of the year as they get more and more supply. The demand, I think, is there. And even though the street numbers went up a ton this year, I would not be surprised to see them go up even more as we go through the rest of the year. Stacey, I want to get to the to the, uh, the the sadder stories in chips, and I guess I'll I bet you can guess where I'm going. Intel, uh, you know, I'm just curious, what if anything in terms of the future of this company will get things going? I mean, the stock obviously not that bad in terms of at least year to date. They have yeah. plans, obviously, to build enormous foundries in various places. Brookfield, yeah. a big partner there in terms of the equity. Just tell me a bit about your thoughts here. Yeah, you bet. So Intel's been through the ringer, as we all know. And I think the bull case on it right now, such as it is, is that it's hard for things to get worse. That is the case. I mean, look, they've already slashed it. I mean, numbers have come down a ton. I think uh, forward estimates are down 95% over the last year. They're, they're pretty close to zero now. Um, they slashed the dividend. They've got people excited that gross margins are going to get back to 40%. They're running in the in the, in the the 30s now, which is, is unheard of for these guys. So it's hard for things to get worse. Too much worse. And then just in terms of the broad numbers, I'll talk about the AI story in a minute, but just numbers in general, um, you know, we were in a big inventory, you know, um, we're in a big inventory correction part of the cycle now. That has probably hit bottom. It probably actually does get better into the back half. We actually, you may know, we actually upgraded it recently, mostly on that call that numbers in the back half were, were too low. The title of the note was, we hate this call. So I mean, like, fine, but um, it seems to, and, and your, your listeners may not know this, but Intel actually at one of the conferences last week actually upticked in the quarter. So it does look like actually that as low as numbers have gotten, they, they may have finally hit bottom. So that's a positive such that it is. Now, structurally, they still got a lot of wood to chop. So this whole foundry strategy, it cost a lot of money. It's still unclear whether to be successful. Their core markets, PCs and everything are, are nowhere near where they were peak and they're still losing share. We'll see if they can really turn the data center thing around. And, and then on the AI front, They've got a less compelling story and roadmap than some of the others out there. They've, they've got some products. We'll see how well they sell. They're trying to make make a thing out of them. But as a percentage of their total revenue, and in terms of just the, the, the narrative around the hardware and the software and everything they have, it's just a less compelling story in this environment yeah. versus other options.